How will artificial intelligence change diabetes clinical practice? That's the topic being discussed during our Ask the Expert session. And one of those experts, Dr. Boris Kovachev, is here in studio now to weigh in. Pleasure to have you today. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. This is such a hot topic, truly across you know medicine as a whole. But I want to start simple. Can you lay out some of the ways that data is being aggregated or mined when it comes to diabetes? Well, AI is used in several ways in diabetes. One of the most popular ways currently is to use large language models and uh, GPTs to uh, aggregate data, produce new content, summarize uh, existing knowledge and digest it for the physician or for um, the individual with diabetes. But the real difference in diabetes is in continuous glucose monitoring. Um, that's the only disease, I believe, that has that kind of monitoring every few minutes. Uh, and that generates enormous amount of data where AI is very, very helpful. You've said in the past that the physician will play interpreter when it comes to utilizing AI. So how do you see the clinician using AI in the clinical setting? Well, not just an interpreter, also a decision maker. But AI will sum summarize things, will find subtle relationships uh, in the data that people cannot see with the naked eye. For example, in CGM data, there is a cloud of traces that the naked eye cannot really Distinguish and I would pre-digest that to a meaningful piece of information provided to the physician and then the doctor makes a decision based on that digested information. It's just the data is so much now that the human mind is incapable in digesting it in, in a short encounter between physician and the patient. You also think that uh, AI will have an impact on clinical trials or rather the data that we get from clinical trials, correct? Yes. Uh, I mean, the data that we get from clinical trials uh, currently are um, generally simple, hemoglobin A1C, things like that. But when continuous monitoring comes in, the clinical trials generate a lot of data at once. So there is data science needed to process this data and find meaningful outcomes from the clinical trials. Are there any downsides to AI? There are some ethical concerns. What do you say? There are concerns with AI at several levels. The most intriguing thing is that uh, AI is a black box. We don't know how what's going on inside. We don't know when we get the data in and we get an output from AI, we don't know how this is processed inside. It's a matter of the training of uh, AI. So if we didn't train it well, uh, it can go anywhere. Right. And that is of a concern, uh, not just for the physicians, but also for regulatory agencies as well. Is it also a concern making sure that we have data from diverse populations? Mm, yes, it has to be diverse, it has to be comprehensive, it has to be uh, in different situations, corner cases and so forth because that's where AI will fail. If it hasn't seen something, then it may fail. Final question for you, and I think this is kind of the million dollar question when it comes to AI. For both the physician and the patient, they want to know, will machines replace my doctor? Uh, the machine is not going to replace the human touch, uh, but it depends on what do you mean replacement. If uh, we go with the Turing test that says a machine will pass for human if it convinces other humans that it is a human, uh, <laughs> then that is already happening. Um, for example, I'm going to review today a paper briefly that came out of Israel in uh, January and GPT-4 uh, passed the uh, residency exam in four out of five specialties uh, over there. So it's unclear. There is some concern there. Right. It'll be interesting to see what the future holds with regard to AI. And it's not too distant future either. Right, right. We're there. It's <laughs> happening right. now. Dr. Kojavid, thank you so much for your time today. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you for inviting me.